Hey there, everybody. My name is Paul John, and this is John Maybe. Hi there. And we are here to answer some of your questions from the Hippo Mailbag. And in this segment, we actually have a question from the AAPA Pants Pantry Review. And let's get started. So, this is a 12-year-old boy who was brought into the emergency department by his father because of pain and blurry vision of his right eye for the past day and a half. He was treated with oral antibiotics for a dental infection two weeks ago. Physical examination of his right eye shows redness, warmth, tenderness, and swelling around the eye and the upper and lower eyelids. There is mild proptosis. Uh oh. The pupil is round, but reacts sluggishly to light. Extraocular movements of the eye are limited due to pain. Which of the following is the most likely diagnosis? Wow. This item is just full of red flags. Loaded. Right? So, right. Yeah. so it's a 12 year old kid, and clearly there's uh, things that just really are, are like um, uh, pointing in the direction of this is like an emergent kind of condition that needs to be jumped on, like yesterday. Yeah. So, pain, eye pain is always a you know, horrible red flag that you need to be aware of. Blurry vision, right? That can be, you know, can happen maybe from uh, time to time. But this kid went, had some uh, antecedent infection, treated, mm -hmm. now he's got this kind of uh, secondary kind of process that's going on. So, this is clearly like a, a, a major problem. Proptosis is never a normal finding, right? So, you know, this <laughs> oh, kid's really? Got, really? <laughs> <laughs> My eyeball's coming out. <laughs> So, um, well, so let's take a look at these answers. All right, so A, acute ankle closure glaucoma. So, I mean, this is a plausible condition, right? So, acute ankle closure glaucoma, another one of these emergencies we need to know about, but the clinical picture doesn't really fit this profile. Um, we kind of get like the, of course, increases in intraocular pressure, narrowing of right. the anterior chamber. None of those things are, are mentioned in, this, yeah. in the- Definitely uh, eye pain, steamy cornea, sure. fixed mid-range pupil, but that's not the, the what they're talking about right, here. Right. Uh, B, anterior uveitis. So, anterior uveitis, that's a, a condition you can basically just kind of narrow down to iritis or uh, uh, iridocyclitis. I, yeah, yeah. I don't even know how you pronounce that. No, you get it. Yeah. But uh, so basically, um, you know, we see those in some um, inflammatory conditions, but we certainly don't see the clinical picture that that's given yeah, here. Yeah, the, the red flags would be like consensual photophobia. You might see cell and flare on the lamp exam, but right, right. that's not the picture. Uh, see orbital cellulitis? Okay, orbital cellulitis, that's looking pretty good here as a uh, potential ideal or potential uh, uh, answer. So indeed, uh, that's the correct uh, answer for this. And okay. this kid has all those findings. So when you take a look at this, all those things that you're looking for with respect to signs and symptoms, they're pretty much packed into this question. So if you, um, um, if I think that's pretty straight with respect to uh, uh, getting to that answer. He's got an antecedent infection. There's clearly spread uh, to the adjacent orbital structures and boom, this is what this kid awesome. probably has. Uh, to finish it out, poster UV itis D. So yeah, again, it's another, um, uh, on, uh, granulomatous type of a condition that we see like in the posterior structures of the eye. So that's more of the retina, chorid uh, structures that are involved and none of the findings we'd see in that condition um, is what, what's given in this item. And then E, I think this is the greatest foil, preceptal cellulitis. Yeah, so this is one of these ones you're thinking, ah, oh, shoot, man, is it like... Yeah, it's all red it? inside the exactly. upper and lower eyelids. So preceptal cellulitis, that's really um, uh, that uh, periorbital cellulitis is the other way you can describe that condition and that's really more of an infection of the eyelid, the eyelid structures, but it's really soft tissue. doesn't involve like the orbital structures. We don't see like the um, like a, a intra increase in intraocular pressure in those circumstances, certainly not proptosis. So some of the findings are there, but we clearly don't find the uh, overlap between them. Yeah, the way I remember is the preceptal versus postceptal. So like the actual orbital septum, anything outside of it is going to be preceptal so you can see it, but right. then anything behind that is going to be orbital cellulitis, basically. Exactly. So anything that involves like the extraocular muscles, the fat and behind it, uh, the proptosis, the extraocular movement of the eye with pain, right. those are probably the bad things to look for. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. So the answer is? Answer is C, orbital cellulitis. Awesome. Just and, as, a, yeah. as a side note, so this is the type of item where there's actually two pairs of answers, right? We have like two cellulitis, is that, yeah, is yeah. that a plural? <laughs> cellulitis. Two, two, two UVI <laughs> tie. <laughs> <laughs> so um, one of the things as a test taker, oftentimes you might clue into one of those and say, oh, it's got to be one of these two because there's two pairs of items. So as a test taker, you don't want to necessarily fall into that. A trap because it could be that the item that's not paired might be the correct answer. So word to the wise, you really do need to know the uh, uh, content and don't get lulled into these uh, uh, test taking type of strategies or, or techniques that that may or may not uh, be the correct you know pathway to take in this particular case. Awesome. In this case, it is, but you know it doesn't always isn't always the case. Good to know. And that wraps it up for this segment of the Hippo Mailbag. We'll see you next time when we answer more of your questions. All right.